Today, I'm going to be talking about awesome lady in botany, Mary Richards. What I find the most remarkable about Mary is that she didn't start doing the bulk of her collecting until after the age of 65, which shows that it's never too late for a career change or to pursue a new interest. And she wasn't just collecting in her local area, she traveled to Africa to collect and eventually moved there. Mary was born in 1885 in North Wales, near Marioneth, though she spent much of her time growing up in Lichfield. Mary had many mentors growing up, perhaps the most important of which was her German governess, Fräulein Wall. It was Fräulein Vall who inspired Mary's habit of looking for interesting flora and fauna wherever she went, and it was also Fräulein Vall who first taught Mary how to press, mount, and label a plant specimen. Mary's uncle Monroe was also a lover of nature. She spent much of her time growing up in Wales, going on hikes and fishing with him. This likely contributed to her love of the surrounding landscape in Wales. Mary was also encouraged by family friend Claridge Druce, a botanist who went so far as to make Mary a lifetime member of the Botanical Society of the British Isles, an organization that still exists today. Coming of age as a woman in the early 20th century, however, meant that Mary wasn't encouraged to enter academia. Against her parents' wishes, she became a part-time student at Mason College, which eventually became the University of Birmingham. She studied under William Hillhouse, the first professor of botany at the university. She had to save her pocket money and sell eggs to afford the train fare to get to school, and she couldn't pay tuition. After a year of these classes, she still didn't have the support of her parents, so she had to abandon academia. In 1907, she married Major Harry Richards, and they traveled the world together. This allowed Mary to collect specimens in places like China, India, and North America. A bonsai tree she bought back from Japan in 1912 is still alive and well at her family home in Wales. When World War I struck, their home became a military hospital. Mary trained for six months as a nurse in London and then was in charge of 50 beds at their home, a large responsibility. In 1916, she received the Royal Red Cross Medal for her work. Mary was extremely passionate about public health, particularly when it came to tuberculosis, maternity care, and the health of children. She was also involved in the Nursing Association and the Girl Guides. She continued to study the plants of Wales in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and resumed her globetrotting after the death of her husband in the 40s. Widowed and her children grown, she traveled to Africa and fell in love with the place. It was in Zambia that Mary did most of her collecting for Kew, the botanical gardens based in London. She did much of her work in Mbala, where she eventually moved. She later moved to Tanzania when political situations in Zambia made her work difficult. She spent 23 years traveling across the landscape and collecting in Central Africa. She returned to Wales most summers, which allowed her to found the West Wales Field Society now the West Wales Naturalist Trust. She also collaborated on publications about Welsh flora. So far as I can tell, the woman never stopped moving. Even in her 80s, she was traveling across the African landscape in a Land Rover collecting plants. When her eyesight started to fail, she did return to Wales for good and lived in the refurbished cottage she'd moved into when her husband died. When asked if she missed Africa, she responded, No, I finished with Africa. I love Wales and wouldn't live anywhere else. Mary Richards died in 1977. She has over 35 plants named after her, and she collected over 28,000 plants for Kew. Botanist Edward Robinson credited her as one of the most important botanists in Central African flora research. She was given an honorary Master of Science from the University of Wales, and was made a member of the Order of the British Empire. She was truly a botanical badass. In an interview with William Condry from 1974, she described herself as always a rebel, always different. If you'd like to learn more about Mary, you can get the book Wildflower Safari, The Life of Mary Richards by William Condry. It's a little bit hard to get your hands on, but it's definitely worth it if you'd like to learn more about her. Mary was an amazing, driven, and passionate woman, and I think she shows us you can do amazing things at any age. I hope you found her story as inspiring as I did. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to help me make more videos like these, I encourage you to become a monthly Patreon patron. You pledge a monthly amount as little as a dollar and get cool perks in return. It would also be awesome if you liked this video and subscribed, and I'll see you next week for more botanical awesomeness.